So I've been in this workspace for about four years, and of course, the clutter has crept in. I've held on to more things than I've let go of, and now that we have three people working from home, it was time to update the workspace to suit our current needs. So I want to share with you what I've done to tidy things up, to make it more efficient, and share some tips to help you refresh your workspace as well. The most pressing need was to add another workstation, but this isn't a very large room, so I also needed to make better use of all the space that was available, which meant adding a lot more storage. Before I could sketch out the plan and order new furniture, I spent some time removing everything that I didn't need, keeping only the essentials. Our second workstation is gonna be here, and this will be a standing desk with a new chair, we're gonna add some new furniture at the existing drafting station. We wanna add some storage, and this is the obvious place to do it. This will have to be low storage, given the windows that are nearby. And then, I used to have a material storage cart right here, it was a mobile cart. I didn't like the look of it, and it was actually quite dusty and cluttered looking, so we're gonna replace that with a large mobile tool chest here. And this will become a mobile workstation, and we can use it to move to the center of the space, use it as a filming backdrop. The center tables have been reduced to one table since we're not doing any in-person meetings for the foreseeable future. And then if the mobile tool chest needs to move in the center, this can live over in this zone. In addition to styling upgrades over here, something to cover the mini split, and various other interventions around the studio, and a general decluttering of the entire space, I think we're gonna have a nice cohesive solution to the problem. When you have a workspace that's gonna be used by multiple people for different purposes at different times, a sit-stand desk can make a lot of sense. And this one is the Sway Desk by Ergon Office, and it has this massive solid birch top. The size of the desk allows me to spread out a laptop, a tablet, reference materials, and even a full-size set of drawings to use for phone calls or coordination meetings or markups. In a small space especially, it's important to limit the number of materials and colors you're using. Here we're using the natural wood tones, blacks, and grays. The controls are flush with the top and you can use the presets to kind of quickly raise and lower it to your favorite working heights. Now there is some assembly required with this, and that also includes the matching drawer which they sent me. I mounted that to the left side, and then I fixed the power strip nearby the drawer. And that kind of keeps all the cords and cables tucked out of sight, leaving only one umbilical to power the desk. So I picked up two new chairs, one for each workstation, and these are a play on the Eames management chair at a fraction of the cost. This is the Soho Drafting Chair by Laura Davidson. And like the Knoll version, this one has a heavy-duty cast aluminum base, a plush seat, and a tilting back, and even removable arms. Most importantly, it's a comfortable seat. I did swap out the casters for rollerblade-style wheels for a quieter ride on the concrete floor. On the desk surface itself, I've done a real heavy edit. I've removed all the knickknacks, trays, external drives, the soundbar, and I've consolidated the tools I use most into this repurposed tube steel sample. And this is a column from a recent project of mine. We were testing the sandblasted finishes on it. So I've just simply divided that interior of it into four quadrants, and that holds markers, sharps, and pens. Now grounding everything on the desktop is this large leather desk pad, which is a much more comfortable surface for long drawing sessions. It's easily the best dollar for dollar upgrade I made in the past year. Now to get everything sort of tuned up and matching, I swapped out the standard white Apple keyboard and the Magic Mouse for the space gray versions. And this is a real personal choice. You know, I realize there are many other options available, many of which I have tried, but I've always returned to these because they just work. And because I can't use a thumb wheel for horizontal scrolling, which I absolutely need for video editing and digital drawing. I'm still using the 27 inch iMac, but I've blacked out the front and the base with a skin to complement the other black accessories. And I also repurposed a piece of black slate to use as a coaster. This one is a Burlington stone called Kirby. 
I added a wireless charging pad, and you'll see the cable leads beneath the desk where I've mounted a black aluminum tray to hold my eight terabyte Le C hard drive and that stores all of my digital files. The tray also has some extra space, which I can use to daisy chain future drives. You can just never have enough storage space, it seems. Everything is powered and protected by an APC battery backup. Given how unreliable the power is here on the island, especially during stormy weather, that was a complete necessity. Now to gather up and tidy all the cables, I'm using these split sleeve covers, and I also use these simple adhesive hooks to keep my cables throughout the space ordered and kind of out of sight. It's a really small detail that I think makes a big difference. For the task lighting on the desk, I chose Artemides Ptolemaeo Mini Desk Lamp in black. I've just always liked their timeless modern look, and we have one for each one of the desks. For remote meetings, which we probably all have been doing more than our fair share of lately. I've been using my DSLR and I mount that to a ball head on a rolling stand, which allows me to just easily change locations so I don't always have the same backdrop. That's all connected via Magewell's capture card to my desktop or laptop, depending on where I wanna be. And I use a command strip to mount it there. So I wanted a darker backdrop behind the main desk, so I went ahead and skinned the wall with three sheets of MDF, which I painted with chalkboard paint. And these are mounted on these concealed clips, so I can remove them later in the future if I want the natural wood back. On the same wall, I added two metal ledges from CB2 because I found I was just filling up every horizontal space in the studio. And this ledge adds about eight feet of horizontal display space without taking up any floor area. So right now I'm using it to display material palettes, books I'm reading, and various found objects. Concealed along the front edge are two play lights from Philips, and these are controlled via the Hue Bridge system, which I also installed. These serve as kind of practical lighting in the background, and they can be changed to any color that I choose via the app. I also added a roll of backdrop paper. This is by Savage and that's mounted to the loft joist so that serves as another kind of neutral background for photography or filming projects. But when I first built the studio, I did not have the budget for built-in storage, but if you want a minimalist, organized, and clutter-free space, storage is absolutely essential, and you'll probably need a lot more of it than you think. IKEA, West Elm, CB2, these are all good go-to vendors for well-built storage pieces if you're looking to stay on a budget, which I was. I've added two of the IKEA Calyx storage units, and these sit beneath the west windows, and although they're kind of generic, they're also really neutral, which is what I look for in storage generally. The upper cubes I'm using to store objects, and it's also serving as a reserve capacity for books. I just never seem to have enough expansion space for the library, so here I've accounted for that. The lower cubes I've fitted with IKEA's Bladra felt boxes, and these hold kind of irregular objects, things I don't want out in view, and just generally collecting dust, because that's one of the problems with open storage, it gets dusty. One piece of advice when you're buying new storage boxes is you should buy about two times the number you think you'll actually use. Number one, you're probably forgetting some things that you wanna store, and then also you'll want room to expand. Before refilling the shelves, I did another heavy edit on my library. I removed all the outdated books, publications, magazines, things I wasn't really referencing anymore. And I took the time to digitize sketches and just reshuffled things to place all the books near eye level and the less frequently used reference material and all the files down below. Now we come to the rolling tool chest. This thing is a beast. It's made by Husky and the full unit actually comes in two pieces. So it's actually much larger. I'm using only the lower half here in the studio and it's just incredible how much this thing can hold. So in here I have everything from photography equipment to art and model making supplies to tools to my favorite product samples. Now one trick here for organizing is if you buy something with really shallow drawers, it's actually a hack for staying organized because they physically limit the number of items you can fit in the drawers, sort of a forced order. For the deeper drawers, I picked up a few additional pouches and organizers, and this all keeps cables and all the smaller items kind of grouped together, and these serve as grab and goes, so I can quickly grab them and head out to a site or a meeting. Again, I think you can never have enough of these kind of items. So on top of this, I have my two large Alvin cutting mats, off to the side, I've mounted two linear rare earth magnets, and these hold my rulers, utility knife, and you know maybe a drill bit or two. 
And when you raise the standing desk, it converts the two surfaces into this massive work table. And if you raise the standing desk just a little bit higher, the chest will actually slide beneath it. And that creates even more free area in the center of the space. So I've been using Canon's Pixma Pro 100 to print some of my photography on this large format low luster paper. And for a printer that's less than $300, the quality I think is just incredible. These prints are mounted in black aluminum frames to kind of continue the dark motif. To hide the mini split heating unit, which unfortunately is just slightly off center in this space, I picked up the Stendig wall calendar that's by Massimo Vignelli and I slipped the top of that into a concealed poster sleeve and I mounted that to the joists above. To bring a little of the natural landscape inside the studio, I repurposed these concrete napkin holders and these are by Port Living Company. I found them on Etsy and I've just planted them up with some moss right from the forest outside. I also picked up this tiny Chinese elm bonsai which I realize is in desperate need of a trim and that lives on the corner of my desk. Add in a few found and inspirational objects throughout the studio and I finally feel like there's room to stretch out in here. I've linked everything down below in the description and you can check out my entire kit on kit.co. So look for that in the description. A special thanks to Ergon Office. They sent me the Sway Desk and it's a beautiful addition to the studio. We're all enjoying it immensely. So thank you for that. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again next time. Cheers, my friends. Thank you.